Good morning, and thank you for joining us for this morning's children's reading series. Project Chimps is a 236 acre sanctuary located in the Blue Ridge Mountains created specifically to help chimpanzees formerly used in medical research. Our mission is to provide lifelong exemplary care to chimpanzees retired from research. Since 2016, we've been transporting chimps from the New Iberia Research Center in Louisiana here to the Blue Ridge Mountains. This is an overhead view of our peach tree habitat. We have different houses or villas that the chimps live in. We have our cedar tree villa, our Dorothy Joe and Tilly Villa, Chimps Ahoy Villa, the Harmony Villa, and in our chateau, we have two families of chimpanzees that live there. Inside the large villas, we have lots of different things for the chimpanzees to play on. On the left here, we have our vet, Dr. Silva, inside Cedar Tree, interacting with some of the chimps. And you can see the nice murals that we recently had painted on the walls. And over on the right is one of our facilities experts, Lucas, working on some climbing structures for the chimpanzees. Here's Joseph, one of our caregivers in the kitchen. We try to give all sorts of healthy foods to the chimps, a wide variety of fruits and vegetables and nuts. They love sweet potatoes, apples, oranges, onions, and eggplants, all sorts of nice healthy foods. In addition to their daily diet, we also give them daily enrichment. On the left, we have one of our caregivers, Beverly, who has created a wheel that she puts all sorts of different tasty treats in and the chimps have to get a tool and extract some of those tasty treats from the other side. And on the right is a picture of one of our termite mounds. And inside the termite mounds, we use jams and applesauce and maybe some seeds in there and the chimps can fish them out with a stick. We also do a variety of events and field trips. So we do have some different events throughout the year where you can have an opportunity to come and meet the chimps. We're also now doing virtual field trips. Our first reader today is Leslie Kneisel. Leslie lives with her husband, two dogs, one cat, one parrot, three horses, and lots of wild deer on her 40 acre farm in Morganton, Georgia. Because of her deep love for all animals, she felt drawn to help the wonderful chimpanzees at Project Chimps. Leslie has been a volunteer here for two months and works in the kitchen, getting the fruits and vegetables ready for the next day's feeding. She loves watching the different chimps move around and relax in their habitat and just being free to be chimpanzees. Leslie is going to read us Ricky and Henry. Good morning and welcome to Project Chimps. I'm Leslie and this is Buttercup. She lives here at the project. Today I'm going to read to you a book called Ricky and Henry by Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall went to Africa to study chimpanzees and learn all about them. Now Ricky was a little baby chimp living in Africa and she had an unusual friend named Henry. So let's find out what happens. Ricky was born in the rainforest of Central Africa. For the first two years, she lived with her mother and the other chimpanzees of the community. Her mother was the center of Ricky's world. She carried her from place to place. She comforted her when she was hurting or frightened. Every hour or so, more often if she wanted, Ricky could drink the warm milk from her mother's breast. Perhaps she had an older brother or sister. Perhaps her grandmother was alive. We shall never know. The 
because one day, probably at first light, when the chimpanzees were starting to leave their night nests and feed, a loud bang disturbed the peace of the forest. Ricky's mother fell to the ground, dead or mortally wounded. Screaming in terror, Ricky clung tightly to her mother who had never before let her down. But she could not help Ricky now. She would never help her again. The hunter seized Ricky and pushed her into a tiny basket while the infant chimpanzee, who didn't understand, went on screaming and screaming for her mother. A long journey through the forest cramped in a little basket must have been a nightmare for Ricky. She was hungry, but there was no warm comforting milk. She was frightened and she was hurting because shotgun pellets were lodged in her little body. But however much she cried, there was no one to help. Eventually, Ricky was tipped roughly out of the basket. She stared around in bewilderment. Everywhere, there were huge people crowding close and staring at her and laughing in loud voices. Ricky was being offered for sale in one of the markets of Brazzaville in the Congo Republic. It was hot and she was tired and thirsty. Her wounds were hurting even more. Desperately, she looked around for her mother, crying softly. But her mother did not come, and none of the people understood. Vicky stopped crying and curled up on the ground. She closed her eyes. The tall, distinguished Congolese man who stopped presently to look at her thought that maybe the little chimpanzee infant was dead. He bent down and touched her. She opened her eyes. She was too tired and weak to be frightened. The tall man knew it was against the law to capture and sell infant chimpanzees. He was angry and threatened the hunter, saying that he would report him to the officials. The hunter, who probably didn't even know the law of the land, was scared and ran off, leaving behind Ricky. So the tall man picked up Ricky, who was stiff with terror. He wrapped his jacket around her and carried her back to his house. As he went up the steps, his shaggy dog, Henry, sniffed at the strange smelling creature in his master's jacket. He growled a little, then curled up and went back to sleep. The tall man was very kind to Ricky. He found out the right food for an infant chimpanzee and fed her good meals. He asked a doctor to take the shotgun pellets from her neck and back. And gradually some of her joy in life returned. Of course, she must have often thought about her mother and her life in the forest. She learned to make the best of her new way of living, part of the human family. The tall man was her guardian and Ricky loved him best. She was terribly upset when he had to go away on a business trip. The rest of his family did not like her in the house. They went on feeding her, but they shut her outside. Good food is certainly necessary for an infant chimpanzee, but just like human child, 
Ricky needed affectionate contact with a caring adult. She needed love. In her desperation, she returned to the only adult she could find, Henry the dog. She went over to him as he sat watching her and reached out to hold his fur. At first, he was scared. And each time she reached out to him, he growled a little and moved away. But eventually he let her hold on to him. And when he lay down to sleep, she lay beside him, still holding onto his fur. What a lovely picture they made. A small black chimpanzee with huge sad eyes clinging tightly to a medium sized brown shaggy dog whose bright eyes peered onto the world through his thick fringe of curly fur. When Henry went around the streets of Brazzaville scrounging food from the dustbins, as all real dogs will do if they have an opportunity, Ricky went with them. She rode on his back, cleaning on tight with arms and legs, just as if she was riding on her mother. There she goes. And at night, she snuggled close beside him, holding his fur, even when she was asleep. For several weeks, Ricky and Henry could be seen together in the streets or in the back garden of the big house where they lived. And then the tall man came back. Ricky was very pleased to see him and hugged and kissed him for a long time. But she still spent lots of time riding around on Henry and sleeping close beside him when her human guardian was at work. She's sleeping. At last, the time came when Ricky was too big and heavy for Henry it was very important for her to live with others of her kind so that she could learn chimpanzee behavior, chimpanzee manners. And so, though sad to part with her guardian, her guardian sent her to a sanctuary where many orphans like herself were being cared for. Soon, Ricky made many new friends. And what about Henry? Wasn't he sad losing his chimpanzee friend? He was, of course, but not for long. The tall man felt sorry for his little brown dog, and so he found a new friend, another dog dark and about the same size as Henry. So everyone was happy at the end. And that's the story about Ricky and Henry. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed listening to this story about their lives. Thank you, Leslie. And up next, we have Martin Hollander. Martin first attended one of our Chimcation experiences in March of 2020, and in so many words, never left. He immediately stayed on with us as a volunteer and was later hired as a chimpanzee caregiver. Martin is now on our administration team and he can be found helping with donations, giving tours and assisting in events. Martin is going to read us, Little Larry Goes to School.
Good morning, everybody. I'm Martin, and as Leslie told you, this is Buttercup. You might like to know that Buttercup lives here at the sanctuary with her identical twin, Sharice. Just like human beings, there can be twins in the chimpanzee world, and it's pretty rare. So it's pretty special to have a set of identical twins here at Project Chimps. This morning, I'm going to be reading Little Larry Goes to School, the true story of a timid chimpanzee who learned to reach new heights. So let's start. On a misty African morning, a baby chimpanzee was born. It was the rainy season at the sanctuary and heavy showers loomed. Just days later, there was an accident that left the newborn baby badly hurt. A human caregiver had to take the orphan chimp and nurse him back to health. He named him Little Larry. For months, the caregiver fed and cuddled little Larry and cleaned up after him. He even slept with the chimp at night to keep him safe. Little Larry had a lot to learn to get along with other chimpanzees. The caregiver taught little Larry how to groom himself by using his fingers to brush through hair. Grooming is important for little Larry to stay clean and also because chimps groom each other to show they want to be friends. The caregiver hooted, screeched, and stomped with little Larry to teach him how chimps talk to each other. Little Larry also climbed up his caregiver's back to practice using his hands to pull his way up. He needed this skill to climb far as trees one day. When little Larry was eight months old, he was ready for his first play date with another young chimp named Daphne. They toddled around, groomed each other, and explored their cozy enclosure. But this was not enough to prepare little Larry for life in the big sanctuary. When he turned a year old, it was time for little Larry to meet other orphan chimps at the forest school. There, they could practice climb cacao trees. Knowing how to climb trees was important so the chimps could play and search for food. They needed to learn how to find a quiet branch when there was a squabble with another chimp or how to escape from dangers on the ground like snakes. Each morning, little Larry held hands with his chimp classmates, Daphne, Paula, little Jenny, and Lomi and walked to school together. Sometimes little Larry became excited and ran ahead of everyone, but each time his caregiver made a loud whoo whoo sound and called him back to the group. When they reached the forest school, little Larry knuckle walked into the grove. The trees shook in the wind. Daphne, Paula, Lil' Jenny and Lomi were ready to practice jumping and climbing. They grabbed onto branches, bounced on their feet, and leapt from limb to limb. But not little Larry, he stayed on the ground. He wasn't ready to be up high swinging from the trees. While the others took off, little Larry found a log to sit on. He seemed scared. After sitting and watching the other chimps, little Larry searched for sticks, roots, and cacao leaves. He met a giant millipede and poked it with his fingers. As if determined to make a new friend, it seemed like he almost forgot about climbing and his friends high above him. At mealtime, everyone came out of the trees and back to the ground. A caregiver arrived with papayas, avocados, mangoes, and other fruits. Little Larry sucked on juicy watermelon from his caregiver's hand. When they finished eating, the chimps all cuddled together for a peaceful afternoon rest. After nap time, the chimps mostly stayed on the ground. 
They wrestled and played silly games like investigating each other's long pink tongues. Now and again, Daphne would go out of her way to tease little Larry. She snatched a yummy piece of mango from his grasp. Daphne zipped up a vine and escaped with a stolen goodie, tempting little Larry to chase her up the tree. Little Larry balanced on his knuckles and stomped back and forth to let everyone know that he was not happy. But he stayed firmly on the ground. After weeks of being teased and watching the other chimps climb high above him, little Larry grabbed a vine. It was only inches off the ground. He tried to swing, but he fell. Then he grabbed hold again. This time he spun, twisted, and turned. He even hung upside down on a low hanging limb. It wasn't really climbing, but it was a start. His caregiver tried to give little Larry to climb higher onto the branches of a nearby tree. Little Larry crawled up the trunk, but then he looked down. It must have been frightening to be up so high because little Larry scurried back down to the ground, up a little bit and back down and climbed. This went on for weeks. But with each and every try, little Larry became more confident. He swung his arms and legs to get momentum. He used his fingers and toes to grasp the branches. Higher and higher he moved up the cacao tree. After months of practicing, little Larry finally reached the top and proudly looked out over his world. After little Larry graduated from the uh, forest school, he was moved to the big sanctuary, which is called the Mafal Sanctuary. And this is in Africa, the continent where chimpanzees come from. Here's a, fo a photograph of a map of Africa and where they come from. You can see in the shaded orange areas, right here is the sanctuary where little Larry lives now in middle Africa. And they also live on the west coast of Africa. Now, before we go, I'd like to teach you what's called a pant hoot. Chimpanzees, just like human beings, vocalize quite a lot, and they have lots of different vocalizations for different meanings. Probably the most common one is the pant hoot. Chimpanzees pant hoot when they're excited or often excited about food, and also just to say hello or hi, how are you? What are you doing? To do a pant hoot, Put your mouth together, your lips together, like you're going to kiss something. And then you're going to go make three um, who sounds and get louder and louder and then a little yell, kind of like this. And now you're talking chimpanzee. So I hope you enjoyed our stories today and practice your pan hoots and maybe we'll see you next week. Thank you, Martin, that was fantastic. Wonderful learning a little bit about little Larry. So it costs approximately $22,000 a year per chimp to give them everything that they need for food, housing, medical care, and all of their enrichment activities. We sure hope you did enjoy this program today. And if you did, it costs just $7 a day to feed one chimp and $3 a day to provide enrichment for one chimp. So for just $10, you can provide all meals and enrichment activities for one chimp for one day. Consider an annual chimp sponsorship as a gift for $250 or monthly at $23. You can check out our website to learn more about how you can visit the chimps at one of our events, field trips, or other upcoming adventures. Check us out at www.projectchimps.org. Thank you for joining us. We hope you come back and join us next Saturday for the final episode of our children's reading series. 
And if you've missed any of these, you can check us out both on Facebook and on YouTube to see the past programs.